welcome everybody to today's um, live YouTube live. I am thrilled to be here. My name is Kathy Nelson. I'm the CEO and founder of The Photo Managers. And today we have the privilege of interviewing, or I have the privilege and you get to meet her, of Amanda, who is joining us from London, which is wonderful that she's coming, uh, the joy and uh, beauty of the internet, right? So Amanda, why don't you come on and tell us about yourself, your business, and we'll jump in and get started why you sort your photos and how to get started. Hi, thank you, Kathy. Yes. So for those who don't know me, I am Amanda Lifcott, the photo organizer. And yes, I am based in London in the UK, hence the accent in case anyone had spotted that. So hopefully you can understand me. Um, so yeah, just a bit of an intro. So for those who don't know me, some of my uh, subscribers might be joining us, but I am a photo manager based in the UK and I help all of my clients sort out all of their photo overwhelm, whether it's printed photos, digital photos, and then help them share them as well through my business, Clear Bubble Photo Organizing. But I am also passionate, as I know Kathy is, about helping all of those, you know, kind of DIYers, all those who want to help themselves. And I have my own YouTube channel called uh, Amanda Scott the Photo Organizer. There's a theme there. And today I'm hoping that we, you know, we can share and start you on that journey to sorting your photos. Excellent. Yes. And isn't that amazing that there are professional photo managers throughout the world and uh, right. Who knew? And uh, we just actually had a great article in Motley Fool. I don't know if you saw that, but it's, oh, it's a very large that. audience. Yes. That it was like, can you actually make money organizing people's photos? And the answer was absolutely because people are overwhelmed with their photos, right? So those of you joining us today, we assume you're here with us for that reason. And we like to talk, we call it DIY. And then, and we give a lot of tips and then those that actually maybe throw their hands up and say, Amanda, let me give it all to you and you figure it out for me, which is absolutely an option. But what is it that uh, usually, you know, why should people get their photos organized? And what is it that, um, what, you know, why do people need to do this in your So opinion? I think people just need to, you know, I mean, we need to do it because it's all of our memories, it's our history, it's our legacy. But I think the reason most people kind of start on the journey is because there's usually some kind of trigger that starts mm -hmm. people on that journey. And there's lots of different triggers. The one that I see quite a lot when it comes to digital stuff is usually there's been some kind of disaster. They've dropped their phone, their computer has crashed, they, their hard drive is no longer working, or they get one of those little emails from, you know, like Google or Apple going, you need to give us more money and because you've run out of space. So therefore people kind of suddenly just go, oh my God, I need to do something about it. So that's kind of like the digital side of things. That's where people start. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, how many, I always tell people like when, the, when you get that little notice, like, would you like to add some more storage? It's like, if I knocked on you, somebody knocked on your door and said, would you like to me to build another closet in the back of your house? I mean, because it's so easy to just say yes, because you know, oh, it's a dollar or $2 or whatever. And you just keep, you know, adding, 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 but really yeah. what you're doing is just creating, I mean, you're just saying yes to like more and more closets that you'll have to go through. Yes. Someday. And when you do the sums as well, you're like, it doesn't feel that much when you're like, oh, it's only like a couple of dollars a month. It's fine. And then when you add it up, you're like, yeah, that's, you know, I'm now tied in for life to be able yeah. to. Yeah. I always, and, and when people, I don't know how many people are listening, but maybe say yes, if you are, how many of you might be thinking um, there's some magic button that everybody else discovered about organizing their photos, but you're, but you missed it somewhere along the way. And I, I try to tell people, look, these companies have are not have no vested interest in making this easier because they make money on the, the additional storage, right? That's their, yeah. that's and their, then, that's yeah. their proposition, you know, right? So every time yeah. we say yes. Is, I think they've all realized that our photos are a really good commodity. There's a reason why, you know, a few years ago, Google Photos was no longer free. And, you know, they, they know that we love taking photos, which is great. I love the fact that people love taking photos. I love going through photos and sharing them with my family. But yeah, it, it's it's going to cost you. Nothing in life is free. And if it is free, you kind of need to question why. But yeah, before we digress too far down that route. Uh, but yeah, and I think that there's digital, but then there's also this printed stuff that everyone yeah, gets as printed. well. Yeah, you know, which all, we've all got in our kind of attics and basements and, you know, in the garage out back, you know, it's all of that stuff as well, that people don't know what to do with as well. They, yeah. And what are some of the yeah. triggers that you find that um, that fit in that category? Yeah. So it's, there's there's the, you know, the downsizing. There's people mm -hmm. who get to that point in life where they're just like, I just you know I'm going to downsize. I'm going to go to a smaller place. And then what do I do with all these boxes of photos? Because then 
there's also their own photos that they probably got. They probably got all of the photos from their children that they don't know what to do with. And then there's all the photos that they've inherited as well. So they always end up with just all this printed stuff and old cine films and you know VHS tapes. And if you there was a, also a time when we thought, you know, you remember CDs and discs? They were the new thing. They were going to save us all. And now, like, if you can find a computer that has got a disc you know, drive on it, it's probably really old and won't work. So people just don't know what to what to do with all of that stuff. So that's the downsizing trigger, or I've inherited a load of stuff, or mm. or there's some kind of disaster. So th those are the type of things that will end up if you have a flood or, you know, there's, you know, fires or, you know, that type of thing is happening more and more. Yeah, and right. usually that's the trigger is like, either I've managed to save it, or I, I you know, I've ended up with all these wet photos and I don't know what to do with them and I really want to rescue my memories. So there's that kind of trigger when it comes to all that printed stuff as well. Yeah, you know, it's interesting um, from a trigger, I mean now, you know, it's like the shoemaker has no shoes, but when my son got uh, engaged yes. recently, and I always say that another trigger is usually like a life event, like a graduation or a wedding or a new birth of a baby. Yeah. And here my son was getting engaged and suddenly I was like, oh, I really want to do that video montage for the rehearsal dinner where, you know, he's a little baby growing up in the little, the music yeah. that makes me cry. And then her, I had to get photos from her family. They weren't, they didn't know where they were. And, uh, but it took quite a, you know, I started that, I knew they were getting married on Labor Day and I started in January. So, which is Labor Day, September. Yes. And um, we still made it just under the wire because trying to get the photos from her family and, and then me getting mine, getting around to getting my old photos digitized and then the music and all the things that, yeah. Um, and it, but it was and, it, and I'm glad I did it. Yeah. Yes. And it's it's everyone always says that once they've done it, they're really happy that they've done it. And I, I yeah, I think that, that those kind of like it's usually like special birthdays, things mm -hmm. like that, that yeah, all of a sudden you're like, oh, it'd be so great if I did a photo book. And as you say, there's all those printed stuff. It's not just, oh, let's have a quick look through my digital photos on my iPhone. You want to do like baby photos or you want to find you know, all these old historic photos, the black and white ones for, you know, those type of events. And I think that's a trigger because it kind of comes, as you say, it always takes a little bit longer than you think it's going to, mm -hmm. but you've got a hard deadline there that you've got to hit. And if you then want to turn it into a photo book for, you know, Christmas or Mother's Day, we recently had Mother's Day in the UK. Uh, everyone likes to do it on a different day. Uh, you know, so it's like, yeah, that day is not going to move. You've got to get it done by that. So there, there's usually something that pushes people to think, yeah, I should be doing something with my photos. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So what is it that you think, uh, what is it that you think that holds people from getting started though? What is it that that's that resistance? I think that, um, you know, it's a, it's definitely on everybody's to-do list, you know, a someday list, but it's hard it, to move from someday to today. Yeah. And I, I think it's just, it's so overwhelming. It's that, well, how do I start? Because if you think about the, all the stuff that we've just listed, we've just listed, um, you know, all, a load of printed stuff, a load of old media, a load of, you know, then you've got all these hard drives and computers and CDs and discs and computers. And just listing off that makes me feel a little bit anxious about the whole thing. So it's just when you, you just don't know where to start. And usually if we think about all those triggers that we've just talked about, all of those triggers are usually at a point in time when either it's not the best time for you to be doing it. You, you know, you've had a disaster, you've inherited a load of stuff or you, you know, you've got this kind of emergency that you need to try and deal with while you're trying to do all of your photos. So it's just an overwhelming time to try and just do something that actually needs to be quite kind of step by step and thought, thoughtful and really think about how you're going to do it. And yeah. it's just there's so many different ways, you know, it's like, well, where do I start? As you say, you know, if only there was a one magic button that you just pressed and any kind of Googling will send you down a rabbit hole for hours rabbit hole of hole like yeah. how to do stuff. And it's just like, no, how do I do this? What do I do? Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty overwhelming. What are, well, we always, the photo managers, and I know you probably adhere to the five step principle, right? Which is, you know, yeah. steps are always helpful because it breaks down complex yeah. tasks into, I know I love steps, acronyms, and and they really work. So what are the five steps of? Uh, yeah, so we, we love steps, don't we, Kathy? We are, we are all steps. about the steps that go. So there's five simple steps and, you know, we'll have a talk through them. So the first one is about setting your goal. The second one is about kind of 
collect, collating, gathering, collecting, getting everything together. Bit of a hunt and gather. Next one's about sorting, then saving, and then sharing. Don't know why I've got six, but five. <laughs> I think it started on the wrong finger. But yeah, so the goal at the start is thinking, well, where do I want to get to? And think about maybe mini goals where, you know, what's what do I want to achieve? What is my final step? And what are going to be the mini goals to get me there? Because I think that just gives you a bit of a timeline. So as you say, if you've got an engagement party, mm -hmm. is that one of your mini goals to go to? And therefore, almost kind of you might focus on a particular area first and then start looking at everything else. So I think that that kind of thinking about your goal, what do you think, yeah, Kathy, what's your thought process yeah. on that? that and goal I think people are probably surprised when we start out with the first one always as a goal, like people think, oh, we're gonna jump right into the steps, but really okay. if you don't have a purpose or a reason or kind of an incentive to what's motivating you, you're gonna lose steam pretty quickly. Yeah. I always say, you know, it. we didn't create the thought, the, the photo, it's, it's our life, right? So you, what took you a lifetime to accumulate is not going to take you a weekend to, to get in order. And I think people misunderstand, misunderstand the amount of time, even myself, even as much as I say, oh, I, I knew enough to start in January. I really didn't think we would be like coming in under the wire. And I really thought, oh, I was like going to be really smart and it'd be done by June. And it just wasn't because, yeah. you know, there's all sorts of reasons, right? But, and, um, so I think having that goal and then and also then you can change your goals, but like like a main goal and then mini goals underneath that. Like, yeah. oh, I'd love to have all my photos organized to share with my family, you know, my kids uh, into the future. Well, let's the, break that down into. Yeah, maybe, that's yeah, right? that's a, that's a big goal. And I think that's ultimately where people want to get to. But yeah, it's like, what are the mini goals or what are the you know, is there a particular maybe, you know, kind of, as you say, an event or a, a period of time that you just would love to sort out, whether it's a focus on your digital side or your printed side, it's kind of putting it into nice bites, like bite sized chunks. So it feels a lot less overwhelming. I think that's the bit is how can we make it man a little bit more manageable, but with the realization that it's not going to take yeah as you say this is your lifetime it's not going to be a weekend yeah. worth of work in other people's <laughs> lives <laughs> not yeah. just your life but you know your, your parents lives and your uh so that's why the next one yeah. is right the uh what we call that the curate or collecting the hunt and gather yes yeah. so we have to collect yeah. everything it's it's what i like to call like the hunt and gather so it's literally going around your house and thinking right where is everything you know what what, a, what is kind of getting a, like a big box especially when it comes to digital, you've got those USB sticks that are probably in the back of a drawer somewhere, you know, everyone's got kind of those, all those. So it's just doing a bit of a hunt and gather and going, right, where are, where is everything that I, that I need? Uh, and that I want to include in this project, whether it, it might be that some of it is at someone else's house, it might be relatives photos. So you were talking about collecting photos for, you know, for the engagement, where are they? You know, where, where are those photos? Where are you, you know, who do you need to speak to? who might also have photos of your family tucked in their you know, basement that they inherited from someone. So it's just kind of thinking about like, you know, gathering all of that together. And as you're doing that, doing a bit of an inventory at the same time. So it's really thinking, you know, kind of keeping track. So how many hard drives have I got? How many USB sticks? How many boxes of photos? How many albums have I got? Um, you know, and then you'll start seeing things that you've missed. So is there an old phone somewhere or uh, is there, you know, uh, some cine films or other VHS tapes. So you'll kind of start seeing where the gaps are and kind of going, yeah, that's where I'm missing stuff. And that's who I need to, do I need to go and, you know, do I need to speak to my brother to, to give me some of the photos? So it's kind of just getting that real hunt and gather, but recognizing when you're doing this, that no doubt, once you've already started sorting, you will find some more stuff. Yeah, I was going to say okay. that was... Right. And yeah. you, as a, as a professional, how many times have people given you all oh. their photos and, and then all of a sudden they're, they think you're done with the project and they, oh, I found another box somewhere. It's it's a bit of a running joke when I just kind of, I always say to people, it's like, find what you can, but I 100% guarantee that you will come along and go, so I found, I found some more just out here. And also just think, you know, all about all those all online things as well. Like, you know, yeah. Flickr accounts and, you know, somebody, you know, you, oh, I've got some random selection of photos on Google Photos because I decided they were going to be, you know, where I was going to store it. And then I've changed my mind or I've got some on OneDrive or, you know, it's like thinking about all that online stuff as well. Like, what are the passwords? Where are they? So, yeah, so it's okay. To, it's almost like you do kind of hunt and gather first, kind of measure it up. 
but don't sit there for two months going I'm still hunting and gathering because I haven't found everything yeah. it's kind of thinking that's fine I'm, I've got I've got more than enough to keep me going I've got an inventory and now I'm gonna kind of slide into step three which is doing the sort which right. I always, yeah I always say it sounds like it's just a simple word isn't it I'm just gonna sort some stuff could be great, That's isn't it? Honestly, the sorting or the curation, we use different words for it all the time, mm -hmm. is the heart of the project. That's the biggest, yeah. most time consuming part, but the part that if you take the time to do it, you'll never regret. I think people like to think they can skip this part. Like, oh, let's just get all my photos I ever took scanned. But then it's like we always say garbage in, garbage out, right? If you get the same, if you just scan the same mess of photos you had in the boxes and things, you're just going to have a digital. So let's talk about the... Yeah. The ABCs of photo organizing. Yes, we love the the ABCs. It makes it yeah. So A is for like your album stuff. So these are so basically uh, just to step back a bit. People would kind of go, well, how do I sort my photos? And they think you know, I've got this table full of stuff, and it's going to take up my entire space. And we always talk about like shoe boxes and dividers. So having a shoe box and stacking your photos in there just makes it so much easier to do the job and then pack it away because, as we said, it's not going to take you a weekend. You can put it over in the shoe box and then you can pack it away. And it's having a shoe box for each of these categories. So you've got A, which is your albums. So these are your best photos. These are the photos that you love. These are the things that, you know, will you will get, you know, put into that lovely montage that you're going to do for the engagement or make into a photo book or put on a wall. So, you know, one of my A photos behind me, that would be one of my A photos. And then B is like the box stuff. These are the ones that's like kind of support your A's, but you know, you you probably want to, you might not digitize straight away. These are probably going to be your archive stuff. These are the things that support, you know, kind of, it's part of your legacy, but not your super best. Yeah. And then and I, always, I, I always say the yeah. reason, the reason I came up, you know, I came up with the ABCs yes. a long time ago, but the B is because even myself, I would be like, oh, I don't know, is this an A photo or a B photo? I, I, you know, I can't really make a decision. So knowing that when we go to the C, throw, the idea of throwing photos away, you there are photos we can't throw away, even if we think we, yeah. even if we know there are not an A photo. And so those go back in the box. Exactly. And then I love to joke, uh, you can put a note on the box that if somebody in here, if you've passed away, you know, say, yeah. if you open this box and I'm gone, you have my permission to throw these photos away. Because so many people inherit boxes of photos and they just, yes. you know, if they move them from house to house because they don't know, they feel like guilty. Oh, I'm throwing away a person or a story or uh, yes. that's my little tidbit on B. Yes. And I, I think that's where we sm slide smoothly into C, which is the can. And I would say that both of us are here to give them people permission. It is okay to throw away your photos. Mm -hmm. It's okay to delete them. It's okay to throw away printed photos. I know it feels like really uncomfortable sometimes. You're like, these are our precious photos. These are our memories. But if you don't know what the hill is, if you don't know who the people are, if it's a duplicate, if it's a bad shot, if it's, you know, if you just don't like it, is okay to throw it away. Just throw it away. It's fine. It's okay. So yeah. I, I think people feel really uncomfortable about doing that sometimes. They do. And when I've done presentation, it'd be funny people here to like, what, what is it? We should do like a survey, you know, go, go like a man on the street, you know, do you throw your photos away? And if not, yeah. why? Because no. when you ask people why they, you know, they usually will say, well, it's, a, I'm, I'm think I'm throwing away a memory. I'm throwing away a person. I also think psychologically, because we paid mm -hmm. to have them printed, it's yes. like you're throwing away, um, you know, you would throw away receipts and junk mail, but we we think of photos, we don't realize that, you know, poorly composed photos or lots of scenery yes. shots is really just junk mail. Yes. But I think we just psychologically have had a hard time letting that stuff go. And yeah. it makes it so much easier to let it go. And I think we all did, you know, when we went and got them developed, we all ticked that little box going, I want a, sec I want a second copy. Before mm -hmm. you knew whether they were any good and half of them were atrocious shots so it was like oh no I want a second copy so I can then put them on a wall or whatever and then you just kind of tuck that little you know second copy away and you're like well I've got two bad shots why am I keeping even one of these so it's like yeah it's okay it's okay to throw them away and and get rid of them and uh, yeah I think it's kind of please just throw them away it's fine <laughs> you'll feel better about it um you at will. the end 
of the uh, the project. I did have one client I remember working with though. She, I had to take the bag, the garbage bags away because she was afraid she'd go out in the middle of the night back into her garbage to get them out. And yeah. uh, she's never called me complain, you know, never called me sad that that I did that for her though. So yeah, I'm doing exactly the same with a client actually. Who I'm seeing tomorrow. I was like, oh, these are the ones we've thrown away. She's like, don't don't bring them again because I'm just going to go through them and bring them back in. And I was like, no, no, okay. Okay. You'll never know. You'll never know. Be fine. So yeah. So I think that's that's you know. So we've got the ABCs, but there also is an S at the mm -hmm. end of that ABCs as well, isn't there? There's a S for stories, and um, yeah. So these are the ones that aren't necessarily your best photos. They're not you know the ones that are going to be in a box. These are not the ones that you're going to love and cherish, but they tell a story about you and your life. And I always talk about a photo and um, which is a picture of my dad doing some DIY and in the photo um, he's helping put up the bed frame for me uh, in my new house and he's managed to get there's like a towel rail that he was using to prop up all the pieces of the bed frame and he's managed to get the towel rail stuck he's like screwed it in to the bed frame and it's not a photo that I you know I'm not going to put on the wall I don't love it but I love it because it makes me laugh about the fact that he was so bad at DIY <laughs> so no one no one else knows that as a story my brother probably knows it but it's just like yeah, yeah. it's not it's not going to go it's not going to go in a photo album but I love the story that goes with it so I think that's you know that it's remembering all of those as well like the quirky things that you know was there a, a particular quirk around your house like you know picture of a door or something like why why have I got a picture of the door well what's the story that goes with it or yeah. you know things like that so I think that that it's kind of not just thinking is this the most perfect shot of me and my family it's thinking what is the story what is your story that you want to tell right because that's after all at the end of the day I always say once you know we are by nature as human beings we're people of stories we tell stories you know yeah. since the beginning of time oral traditions you know we passed down stories sitting around the campfire and once cameras were put in our hands we became visual storytellers and yeah. now that we have phones in our hands at all times we obviously are like just way too many, <laughs> a little way too much on the virtual, I mean, on the visual storytelling, but we all love it, right? We all do it and we want it. And it's so, um, but the, it's because we're telling a story. The photo's going to yeah. tell the story. And that's what, that's the point of this. So, yeah. Um, and I, and I think it's capturing those stories as well. So it's kind of like, what other ways not to add to the amount of stuff that you've got, but it's also thinking, you know, what kind of audio uh, kind of stories could you easily capture to go with this kind of sort yeah. that you're doing so the story about me and my dad and his bad DIY um, and you know, what are those great. I mean there's so much great technology about yeah. ways to do that today I mean the we get exposed to some incredible um early you know early adapter technology and stuff yes. and I, I've seen I saw something yesterday too that's just incredible um the way that the old black and white old scan photos it train AI I, they can tell you like just crazy. I mean, you would think that you would never know anything about those photos, but it actually you can learn. Yeah, exactly. I think that that's the thing. So I think it's all just about those photos and, and the so, memories. Oh, I think Kathy's having. Are you still there? Up my back. <laughs> why is my internet? Yeah, your back's fine. Oh, I don't know why. <laughs> uh, we do have some handouts, right? That are being linked. I hope in the um, in the chat. Yes. Yeah, we do. I think they're either in the chat or, you know, they'll be in the description at the bottom, which is around the, the five steps. I think I saw that one appear. And then I've also got like a quick start guide as well to help people um, kind of quickly start their photo organizing journey, which also talks about these kind of elements and, uh, you know, the inventory and how to and also how to keep going with the project as well. Because I think that's the thing is as you're doing the project is kind of almost like celebrating uh, the 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 wins as you go along that's that's also a good thing so rather than just great crack along I hope I'm not I might be I don't know why my internet is freezing a bit it just still I can see <laughs> you can see a little bit right a little freezing okay so yeah. uh well how do you get to, uh so what's the steps of people that they're listening to this I know we have a lot of questions so we want to get make sure yeah. that we get to yeah. those so, so yes yeah, so we got as far as three didn't we step four <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I jumped ahead. I mean, what was I? Th I think oh, I got through step four, yeah, the most important one, sort of. <laughs> so this step four is all about saving it. So making sure that you are backing up all of the stuff that you've got. So it's making sure that you are backing up properly. And when I say properly, I mean down a one way street. So backing it up so it becomes an island. So if things crash or um, you need to recover it, you can go to that island and go and pick it up. 
So it's like mm. putting it onto a shelf and then bringing it back, not syncing. So uh, Apple iCloud is a syncing service. If I went to your phone and deleted all of your photos, it would go from everywhere. Yes, it would be in the trash can for about 30 days. But if I went to the trash can and deleted it, it would go everywhere. There'd be no way of you like recovering it. So just make sure whatever you do, you can tell I'm quite passionate about this, that you are backing it up and make sure that you're backing it up properly. And backing up for printed photos, yeah, it can be archival boxes. I've just oh, seen some people. Right next yeah. to my computer, my little. Uh, oh, there we go. Or, you know. <laughs> but yes, and, but also kind of just almost like backing up as well, like your printed photos, because essentially they are one of your backups. So it's putting them into like museum archive boxes, making sure that those boxes are not in the attic or the basement. Mm -hmm. uh, putting them, I would say they should live where you live. So put them in the house so that you can, uh, you know, so that they will last as well. But all that digital stuff, making sure you're backing up. And if you do put it online, make sure everyone knows the password. That's always a good mm -hmm. idea because otherwise that gets yeah. lost. So yeah, we've backed everything up, but step five that Kathy was getting a bit excited about, uh, <laughs> step five is the most important part, which is about sharing it. So what's the point of doing all of this if you don't share everything that you've done? So it's all about kind of sharing those memories, whether it's doing lovely video montages or doing photo books or digital photo frames or uh, websites. It's just making sure that you're letting everyone know all this but lovely stuff that you found. Uh, I always say I love embarrassing my brother uh, with all the, the wonderful digital photos that I've done of him when he was younger and sharing them with his children. So that's my yeah. job. And there's so many great. I mean, like the digital photo frames, we have a great relationship yeah. with uh, yes. Nick's Play. It's a great company, but there's other companies as well. But um, where I was just with a girlfriend this weekend and she was saying how her mom, uh, they just discovered the digital photo frame for her because her grandchildren, she now become a great grandmother. And the, oh, wow. so they are not, the grandkids aren't sending photos, you know, like the old fashioned way that like she expected. So they got her the digital photo frame and she just can't believe that every day yeah. photos appear on her frame and she's watching the baby grow. And, and so she's just so thrilled. Um, yes. Yeah, she loves it. Yeah, my mom's got I've got one and my mom's got one and my brother will then send photos to the digital photo frame while they're still on holiday. So that is slightly annoying. So like, here we are on holiday. And I'm like, I'm not on holiday. Great. Um, but yeah, I think that that's kind of, you know, that's um, that's a lovely way to share. And I also for, for my family archive, um, I use Smug Mug, which I know that we, we, you know, we do some work with as well. So they do really nice ways of kind of like, um, websites and big collections um because uh, once you've got it on there you can then password protect it and do nice websites that's really great for kind of those family collections if you don't want to put it into any of the you know like Apple and things like that yeah one other quick thing i i realized i did yeah. get here with my fruit when my internet froze was you can break the rules too i like to say a lot is that you break the rules too like we Another rule that I tell people you can break is we tend to, I always say we live, we're we're living in date time order, right? Today is Tuesday, you know, in March, tomorrow will be Wednesday. It was St. Patrick's Day was Sunday, but we remember thematically, like even using St. Patrick's Day as an example, right? Maybe you're a family that, you know, is Irish roots and you just like every year you go to the St. Patrick's Day parade. It's much more interesting to see photos of all the different photos over the years of the St. Patrick's parade than it is to see like, everything in like time yeah. date order right so you you don't have to always organize your photos in yeah. chronological order yeah and I, I tend to kind of do a bit of a mix for people as well because yeah there's there's like things that happen every year so whether they go to the same place on holiday or um as you yeah like favorite pets um I've got one client who she loves a dog and obviously there's a lot of pictures of dogs but you know throughout the years so it would be you know lovely for her to be able to find all of those dogs and you know be able to enjoy them so yeah you don't have to do years months and days um which whichever i think what it's kind of what works for you that you have to do because you're the ones that are going to enjoy it but then also explain to people what you've done is also a very good thing but yeah you don't have to follow the year month structure do you know do whatever enjoy you know works for you and your collection definitely yeah. Um, so now we've given, hopefully we motivated people. And again, we'll go to these uh, questions in a moment, but how do you, um, how do people get started now? What are some of the things they can do? 
Yeah, so there's all sorts of ways. So obviously there are, you know, kind of our YouTube channels because uh, we have, you know, the photo managers and we have Amanda Little Got the Photo Organizer, which you would all obviously be subscribing to because we are all about helping people kind of on their journey to be able to sort and organize their photos. So there's all sorts of YouTubes, there's courses. So I have a course called Photo Mess Success, which is fo focused around digital photo sorting and the photo managers, you've got your academy as well, where people can you know, do it themselves to be able to kind of start themselves on the journey. But that isn't the only option because if you don't want to do it yourself and you're just feeling overwhelmed just by listening to us talk about all this, or you might be feeling excited, there is the other option, which is a photo manager, which Kathy, tell us, you know, as a photo manager myself, but Kathy, as our, you know, head honcho at the photo managers, what's a photo manager? What is a photo? I know such a great question. I, you know, uh, it's almost going to be 15 years ago, but uh, 15 years ago, somebody asked me to how much I charge to make them an, a photo album and to uh, organize, well, to make an album. And I said, well, I can't make an album because I made scrapbooks in those days. And uh, I had started making digital scrapbooks. And I said, I can't, I need your photos need to be organized because I need a beginning, middle and end. And she said, well, how much do you charge? And I was like, you're my friend. I can't charge you. And she was a really good friend. She said, no, I insist that you let me pay you. I paid a professional organizer or a declutterer when I was moving and it was like, oh, somebody would pay me for this. And so sure enough, she paid me and I started a business here in where I live in Connecticut and I was busy very quickly and people kept hiring me to make it. Then it ended up not just being albums, but they hired me to scan photos. And then they asked me about what do I do with these old home movies? And then what do I do with these letters I got from my grandparents? And I just realized that really there is this huge opportunity to help people put their arms around their vast collections about the things that matter most to them. And so um, people started saying, like, can you teach me how to do this? And so I created the photo managers. We're, we're an association, membership association. You pay an annual fee. We have an annual conference. And it's just an amazing group because everybody learns together. The technology keeps changing. Um, there's more than enough business. There's, you know, we've, we're growing the the um, we have certification where Amanda's certified. So we, she's been vetted. We've we've checked her. You know, she's learned best practices. And um so, and we have members all over the world and we're growing all the time. Yes. And new members joining every, so if you're looking for a business, it's a great business. And we also added something in, this, uh, in January called photo manager and training, because we realized a lot of people were joining, thinking they were just going to get their own photos organized first. So it's a less expensive membership level, but that way there, it's a whole year. So we'll walk you through the whole process month by month, step by step over the course of a year. You're with lots of other people doing it. We have lots of different ways you meet with each other and support each other. And we give you discounts and things at that time, deciding, you know, is this something I really want to do for other people? So that's another option that we've created in the past year. And it's made a big, I think we have almost hundred people in that program now and um, they're loving it and it's really fun. So yeah. Yeah, and there's so many different options. Like if you if you need a photo manager who can just do printed stuff, there'll be mm -hmm. people who will specialize in that or photo books or digital stuff, or there'll be people who do everything. So yeah, and you, you know, so on the website you can find your local photo manager. And yes, there are there's a little gang of us over here this side of the the pond as well. And yeah, we're global. I'm excited to come. They're having their second uh regional yes. or second meeting of the EU group in Amsterdam in October. I can't wait to, I've never been to Amsterdam. So uh, okay. there's, there's enough people. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's, you know, this is a worldwide problem. It's an, mm. in every, everybody has the problem and everybody cares deeply about their photos. I feel like this is the one thing that if the whole world could just open up a box of photos, a family, somebody's family photos, we'd see immediately how much more alike we all are than we, than different. Oh, right. Definitely. Yeah. It's we not, all have our, yeah. We all have our own little quirks. I yeah. love a sunset. That's me. I've taken sunsets. Way too many sunsets in my life. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you're uh, right. But you, I'm sure families in there, your dad, like, you know, yeah. your dad, like putting, exactly. you know, obviously yeah. I can tell you something about your dad right off the bat. If he's a man who wanted to help put together that project for you and he's not even a great DIY guy, but he loves you because he showed up to help yes. you move into he your did. apartment, right? I mean, that's the, you exactly. know, he, he he's tried. A he's a good but, guy. You know, you know, he could, he could paint, yeah, he could paint a mean ceiling, but that was about it. He was tall, so he did a really good job of that. But yeah, I think I think you're right. I think it's it's kind of it, it and also the, the the content that we're creating. We are continuing to make more content, 
So mm -hmm. it's, it's not standing still. Yes, we might not be making any more kind of printed content, but I think that's making a bit of a comeback as well. But, you know, we are continuing to create more and more and more stuff. And if it's yeah. just getting to that point and then you can maintain it going forward, that's, you know, that is where photo managers can help you as well. Just kind of go, let's just get you to a point where you can maintain it. Um, right. I mean, a lot of our members have uh, clients like, yeah, I mean, you we, you pay somebody maybe to mow your lawn or to clean your house or something. There's no reason why you can't have a photo manager who they know you. They get to know your family. They can go in and maintain your photo collection like on a monthly re renewal. And then yeah. at the end of yeah. the year, you can write that family photo book. They've gone through, curated the collection month by yeah. month. I mean, there's so many ways that professional photo managers can work with clients. And exactly. um, and Kathy, I noticed yeah. I just see it jump. C means can. Yes, it means yeah. you can throw them in the can. Can. Trash, you know. <laughs> yes. Send it in the trash. Or for with... those, yeah. Or for those British people, the rubbish bin. We'll just we'll put that one in there. Yeah, the rubbish bin, right? It didn't yeah. work with ABCs, you know. So we have like, <laughs> yeah. ABR. Yeah, work. So yeah, can um, works better. We get that. <laughs> so um good. I think. um Is there anything else we want to uh, address before we jump into questions? No. Yeah. No. I think it's just you know, kind of yeah, just start your journey and however you know, the way it works and the questions i guess i'm used to doing this when we do it through webinars people read off the questions to us but is rebecca going to do that i don't know if i we... can help with that kathy <laughs> <laughs> also, we had not, we didn't talk about that part <laughs> so one of the first questions that came in was about sorting and you guys kind of addressed this already but they were wondering about pictures of scenery uh, some people say to get rid of all the scenery, but is there some line where you keep some to remember the vacations or is any is, is it any picture without people that we know? I, I think it comes down to a personal choice. Um, mm -hmm. I, my kind of guidance always says, if you don't know where it is, then there's no point in keeping it. Because if you don't know where the, you know, the hill is, unlike digital photos, printed photos only give us so many cl clues to say where they are. So I've got some random hills of, you know, the north of England in the Lake District, and I don't know where they are, so I have got rid of them. But then there are some sceneries that are worth keeping just to show the passage of time. So, um, you know, if, if I took photos of London, you know, back in the 80s and took the same picture now, it would be different. So I wouldn't be able to recreate that scenery again. So therefore, I would keep that. I think it's just kind of thinking, is it telling me a story? Does it mean anything to me? And then kind of saying, is it adding to my collection? You could do what Kathy said, which is, you know, put it into that little box section if you weren't sure if it was on the maybe pile. Um, but keeping a shed load of, um, you know, random hills that you have no idea where they are, then probably not. Yeah. The other way I like to address that too is, you know, for some people it's an artistic expression, right? You know, you're playing with your camera settings and maybe you're, you know, editing the the scenery shots or things like that, then, you know, then it's your choice. But I think when you're thinking about long-term um, viewing and long-term enjoyment, then I think just a handful, I always like to say, well, let's hope, you know, this, we hope the sunset and rose today, it'll do the same tomorrow and, you know, and again and again, but um yeah. But I think in the in the end, you're making that decision maybe for yourself, and you can also make maybe make a note like I'm choosing to keep all these uh, scenery shots. But again, but for my family's future, for the future of my photo collection, feel free to delete these. But the people photos is really what we care about. Yeah, and even then, like you know, when I was going through the collection with my mum, she was like, I don't know who these people are, and we're never going to know who they are. So we kind of made a decision of some of them to go. That's okay, you know, yeah. they are random family or like friends of family that we're never going to know so um but yeah so i think sometimes it's it's okay just to go with how you feel there is no right or wrong there is no hard and fast rule yep, no rules do you got what works for you and your collection okay so the next question we had this both for physical photos and digital um any brief suggestions on around storing photos properly yeah, so we mentioned about archive boxes. So there is special, like kind of what we call like museums. So they're kind of acid-free boxes that you can, there's some great sources in the US and there are some sources over in Europe as well that are a really good way to store your photos because it won't destroy them. I don't know if any, if anyone's ever found what I like to call the red wonder photo, which is those photos that have gone a horrible shade of like red and you can't see the colors in them. That's because you've been storing them in like albums that will eat into your photos 
and you know turn them this lovely shade of red so storing them in in kind of archive boxes and then storing them in something that you know um it that will keep them away from moisture and keep them safe which is where we then talk about keeping them where you live um so that's kind of printed photos kathy i don't know is, is there anything else on printed photos yeah. and i think in... when you you know like the shoe boxes that you buy at the dollar store or the craft store are not the shoe boxes yeah. that they're, they're great for the sorting process but not for the long-term photo safety yeah. those you want to go to a you know you can uh, just google archival boxes there's a company here we recommend highly called archival methods they're in rochester yeah. new york great company I don't know who you all, I know there is, there's companies. So in the UK, we have a, a company called Preservation Equipment Limited. So um, they do really lovely kind of, you know, nice, simple archive boxes. So and this is the reason yeah. why we're talking about the sorting is that again, that you don't have to buy lots of those boxes because if you've sorted yeah. your photos, you're only keeping, you know, the, the best photos in those boxes. So you don't have to go spend a fortune on, you know, hundreds of, of uh, archival safe boxes. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. So it's kind of like getting your old shoe boxes to sort your photos. And then once you're done and you've got it down to a nice little collection, you'll know how many boxes you need to go in. And uh, that's that's the bit I love. Uh, so which is like kind of looking at it all together. But then kind of digital stuff. Again, it's kind of about what works for you. We always talk about the three to one uh, kind of storage, which is you should have three copies of your digital stuff at any one time across two different formats, whether it's a hard drive, cloud, hard drive, computer. So it's just kind of having two different formats. And then one we, we say should be offsite. So if you're using things like hard drives, don't have all your hard drives sat in a drawer because that's no help. If something happens to the drawer, have one either offsite or kind of a cloud could kind of cl class as a, an offsite, but just making sure that you've got enough copies should uh, disaster strike. Um, and having the cloud is just is not on its own is not a backup strategy because, you know, they these are big companies, they are not infallible. And um, also sometimes not always easy to get them out of the cloud. Um, but yeah, just making sure that you're following that backup strategy for your digital photos as well. And if you're backing stuff up from your phone, make sure it's doing it. That's, uh, you know, if you need to open up the app, double check to make sure you're doing it. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Okay, so the next one came in, let me just, find it again. Um, the next one that came in was about sorting. So they asked the idea of separating the best from the others, the A's from the B's feels challenging because then when you're scanning and organizing the stories, you need to remarry those into chronological order. So do you have to keep them in chronological order while you're sorting or no? So I use little kind of paper dividers in the boxes as I'm doing it. So, you know, if, if it's like, you know, mum's 80th birthday or something like that, she's not 80 yet, don't tell her that. Uh, so, you know, if it's like somebody's birthday so that you can then marry them up, um, you can you can do it that way. Uh, so that then when you digitize them, you can then marry them up that way. But as we said, the box is probably the ones that you're probably the bees, you may not digitize straight away anyway. So these are the ones that, you know, you'll kind of open the box and go, it's okay to throw away. So the A's are the ones that you, will be doing something with that you will be digitizing that you will be kind of thinking about how am i going to share these what am i going to uh, do with this am i going to put it onto my digital photo frame or get them printed so that that's kind of the the thought process but yeah having little dividers helps yeah and again our you know the the bees normally we wouldn't recommend that you scan the bees that's the idea yeah. again of of saving yourself a lot of time and energy and money the process of that scanning mm -hmm. and then because then you're just going to have them all digital as well. So ideally, you're going to keep the A's separate from the B's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. OK, so next question. Any favorite sites for sharing with large families? Yeah, so so large families. So for my family archive, I use Smug Mug, which is um, uh, kind of it was set up for photo um, kind of organized uh, for photographers oh, to okay. share kind of all their all their photos and sell to clients. So they are re they're really nice. Obviously, nothing in life is free. So everything, yeah, you know, you have to pay for it. Um, but they're really good because you you can load up kind of unlimited kind of numbers of photos, and then you can do really nice websites and control access to it. Um, that's usually if there's a big kind of family collection and archive that's usually the point where i i point people towards um i know milio kathy you've done some kind of work with them they're a really good kind of you know option 
to be able to to share and um, engage with your photos. Um, I would say wherever you're going to put it, always think about how if you ever wanted to get it out, how would you get it out? Because um, is it easy to get it out or is it okay to be leaving it there? Am I committed? Am I okay to be paying this for a period of time? Yeah. So, um, uh, you yeah, know, kind of some people love Google Photos. If anyone's ever tried to get photos out of Google Photos, it's a fun job. Mm -hmm. So if you love Google Photos, then go down that route. But know that it's not that easy to get out. Apple uh, as well doesn't want you to break Apple, up with them. Exactly. They want to hold on to your photos. They're not going to make it easy. Yeah. Yes. So, but if you are a lover of that route, that's fine. Just know what you're getting yourself into. And I would say probably large family collections in Apple Photos will get very unworldly very quickly and sharing them would be uh, a bit of a challenge. So same for Google Photos. All right. So this one's a question about duplicates. Any suggestions on how to deal with duplicates, especially when they're in different places, like unsorted boxes and photo albums? So that sounds like we're talking about kind of printed duplicates. So mm -hmm. if you think that's why once you've sorted them and you put them into these kind of sections, you can spot the duplicates. I've seen that if I if I saw the same picture of uh, somebody by a wall, I've seen it 20 times. After a while, you'll start seeing the duplicates. What I would say is try and find the original source material, and that's the one to keep. So um, I saw the same picture of uh, somebody's mum on a, on a balcony, and I saw the same thing about five times, and then I found the original source material, which was the slide that it came from, and then I digitized that. So trying to find the original source material of all those duplicates, because usually there's a reason why you've taken a duplicate, because you loved it, and it was the best photo. So just kind of, yeah, you, as you go sorting, you'll see them. When it comes to like digital stuff, there are some great tools out there to help you find those duplicate photos. So there's Photo Sweeper for the Mac. My favorite is Photo Sweeper for the Mac or Duplicate Cleaner Pro for the PC. Um, those are great little tools to be able to find those duplicate photos. And actually I did a test recently around finding duplicate photos that of stuff I digitized because I knew that there was digital versions of them and Photo Super did an amazing job of finding those digitized versions of a digital, you know, so I'd taken it, I digitized it and then the client found the old digital version. Uh, it did a really good job of finding the duplicates. Uh, duplicate Kin Kin Pro did a decent job, but yeah. Um, there, there are tools out there to help you. Awesome. Thanks for your question, Amy. We have another question from another Amy here about she wants some backup with her family here. Is it okay for her to throw out albums after digitizing? Her brothers don't want her to. <laughs> oh, okay. So yes. Well, as in like so that so they're all printed albums. If, if I mean if they don't want her to throw them out, then I would say they need to store them. <laughs> yeah. That's a good answer. Like crawl about it. Um, but I think when you know, once you've digitized them, it is a personal choice. I have some people who are like, no, just throw them away. I don't want them. Um, there are people who are like, no, I would like to keep them. Um, if you do have the negatives, that's always a good good thing to keep because then you can go back to that source material and digitize them again as technology grows and how we improve how we digit digitize stuff. Um, but if if you don't like the albums, I would say that if especially those like sticky albums, if you can get the photos out of those albums, it's worth getting them out of the albums and then sticking them in a box because it will save you a ton of space. So yeah, you'd be surprised, um, you know, how much space you can save just by taking it out, out of the albums if you don't want them. So yeah, but if her, you know, if if her brother wants to keep, if her brothers want to keep them, then I would say they need to find somewhere to store them because. <laughs> Story nice. All right. So I think we have time for one more question. You guys have answered most of the questions coming into the chat. So this one's just about negatives. Uh, what do you recommend for how to deal with printed negatives? So negatives, you can actually digitize negatives. There are scanners out there or there is a wealth of photo managers who will do that for you. Um, actually going back to the negatives is sometimes a better way of getting the image because um, if you um, scan from a printed photo, you are sort of at the mercy of the settings that whoever did it at which you're your photo processing place. Um, you're at the mercy of whatever they decided were the right settings for your photo. And in fact, I saw a load of photos and I thought I was going nuts because there was a piece of fluff in every single photo. And I thought I'd done, I was like, what have I done? How have I managed to get the same piece <laughs> of fluff in exactly the same spot in every single photo? 
And then I went back to the negatives. There was no fluff. So obviously, whoever had taken those, you know, wherever they digitized, you know, turned them into printed photos, they hadn't cleaned their their kind of their printer properly. So yeah, if you if you can keep the negatives and digitize from there, if you don't think that you're going to be able to do it yourself, then yeah, a photo manager will be able to digitize those um, at the original kind of quality. Yeah, and it'll, be kind of to it'll be a much better quality. I know I I made yeah. the mistake throwing away negatives, uh, thinking they didn't matter once I had the prints, not realizing that that's considered the truer source. Yeah. And so it's the original. Uh, and so the quality is significantly better when it's scanned than mm. of a print. It costs a little bit more, but again, then you're, yeah. you know, it's just going to, you'll be shocked at the, if we showed you a list yeah. of, a, of a JPEG, you know, just a, you know, a scan of a photo compared to the same photo as yeah. negative, you know, the clarity and everything is going to be significantly yeah. greater. And also, I just as a photo manager, it's, it's the fun. I love doing that. It's that negatives and slides. It's like you just open up a world to something that's so small, and you just kind of go, "This is amazing!" Because it just develops into this amazing digital photo um, of the original colors and the slides. Just yeah, it's turned into a little bit of a digitizing geek at that point. Can't help. All right. Thanks for your questions, everyone. And if you have questions you're watching on the replay, feel free to add them to the comments and we'll be checking back there and you'll be able to get an answer there as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, obviously myself and Kathy are, you know, open to questions on our channels as well. I always love interacting with all of our followers to to see what what also what their problems are or how they're solving these problems, because they're, you know, everyone else has found great solutions out there as well. Yeah. And Amanda does a great job with her, her program. And we do, uh, for the photo managers, we have on this Thursday too, we're doing uh, the top 10 uh, photo products that photo managers use. I, I I surveyed our photo managers, 10, we got 10 volunteers, 10 different products. Uh, that'll be Thursday. So if you're interested in yeah. some of these different products, but also in terms of becoming a photo manager, um, we have lots of webinars and things on that. And I always say somebody, I just saw a question, you know, what does it take? Uh, I would say there's three characteristics of a good photo manager. Let's see if you agree with me, Amanda. Uh, <laughs> okay, am I gonna like? <laughs> I, I think you will. But uh, first one is, uh, are you a lifelong learner? Are you willing to, you know, because th this business, this market is changing rapidly, just like everything. So yeah. if you enjoy learning new things and you, and um, doesn't mean you don't get intimidated because we all can get intimidated by new technology and things, but you're willing to give it a try, that you, um, that you have curiosity, that you are interested in people, that you're interested in stories, you're interested in history. You get excited when you, you know, digitize a negative or something and it, and it pops up in a whole different way. If, you, if you're that person and, um, and if you like, you want to make a difference in people's lives and then it's a great business and you don't have to have a, a background in photography. You don't have to have a background in technology, but you do those characteristics really help, uh, help people get started. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Tick, tick, tick. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I would say, yeah, the, the background of photography. So I am, you know, I'm not a photographer. I'm, I am a curious technological, technological learner. I would say. So I don't, you know, didn't necessarily have a history in tech, but I love learning new stuff. So, uh, and I love sharing that with with people and helping them on their journey as well. So yeah, the backgrounds are fascinating. When we do a survey, like where did, yeah. what, were you, what did you do before you were a photo manager? And we have everything from attorneys to. Oh, I don't know. It's just, it's just incredible. The backgrounds yeah. that people come from, but they have those characteristics. Yeah. Supply chain consultants. Yeah. You were a supply chain consultant, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, we have to go and Google. That I was a sales. I worked for in the, I sold advertising in my local uh, TV, on my local TV station. So. Exactly. Well, great. No, great. thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited. And uh, yeah, I hope everyone great. has learned a little bit of something about organizing their photos. Thank you. And I look forward to, I'll see Amanda in just a couple of weeks in Columbus yes. at her annual conference. Yay. So yep. I'm coming across the pond. I'm across the pond. We can't wait to welcome you. So, all right. Thanks everybody. Bye-bye. Fantastic.